Trade rumors are circulating. Jacob Markstrom, Elvis Merz-Lincolns, and what is the rest of the NHL world saying about the Devils in regards to their pursuit for a goalie? We have a lot to talk about in today's episode of Locked on Devils. Buckle up, everybody. You're Locked on Devils, your daily podcast on the New Jersey Devils. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi, this is Bryce Salvador, and you're Locked On Devils with Trey Matthews. Elliott scores! Oh, Steven stepped up, nailed him. Rodor has got the puck. What a shot. The Devils win the Stanley Cup. All righty now, what is up, New Jersey? Welcome back to the Locked On Devils podcast here on Locked On Network. I'm your host, Kyle Chalky, play by play announcer, Bell's Ryder for Pucks and Pitchforks, and also part time credential media member, Trey Matthews. We might be less than a couple of months away from the trade deadline. It is on March 8th, but things are starting to sizzle out in the National Hockey League because Kevin Weeks put out a couple of cryptic posts on X. So the first post he shared consisted of Jacob Markstrom, and in the description, he put a bunch of eye emojis. But He didn't stop there. He did the same thing for Elvis Merz Lincolns. And what was in the description? Eye emojis. So that got a lot of NHL fans talking, especially people a part of the devil's discourse, because one of the main areas of concern that people have for New Jersey as the season progresses is their goaltending and also their iffy defense. Now, I've discussed it on this show before. I think it's going to come down to what's a little easier for Fitzgerald to negotiate with because the goalie market is very spread thin and Fitzgerald might have to uh, commit to the hardball measures that opposing GMs might put up because I don't think he's going to be able to fleece his way to a goalie this time around. He might have to make a sacrifice, but who's it going to be? Is it going to be Nathan Bastian? Is it going to be Alexander Holtz? And I don't think anyone wants to discuss Dawson Mercer or Michael McLeod. I certainly don't. So I think that might be a little bit harder for Fitzgerald to do. So I think getting a defenseman might be a little easier and might also come a little cheaper. But we will definitely keep our eyes out as the trade deadline inches closer and closer. Because like I said, we're just less than a couple of months away from the trade deadline. And we already have so much to discuss. So in today's episode, it's going to be goalie centric because While it might be a little hard for Fitzgerald to get a goalie for the Devils, it's not impossible given the circumstances that these teams might be in. So we're going to talk about Jacob Markstrom and also Elvis Merz-Lincolns because we got some more developing stories out in Columbus because Elvis might want out of Columbus because he recently said he's not a backup goalie. He feels as though he's a starter-capable goalie. So We'll definitely discuss that a little later in the episode. Before I give my opinions on the Devils goaltending situation yet again, I first want to play a clip of Elliot Friedman discussing some possible goalie options for the Devils and what it might take for them to get that said goalie. So he appeared on NHL Network a little over a week ago, and the clip is about two minutes. I'm going to play the entirety of it so that way you guys could get a better understanding. So check it out. Elliot, you know, a big theme this year for the Devils has been their goaltending and how much that position has struggled. How can and how will they look to upgrade this? Well, I think, Steve, they have been looking. And, you know, one of the real challenges right now, and I kind of really saw this, the most recent team to really comb through the league was Toronto. And one of the things I've kind of heard from them, and they're trying to be careful about it, is just say, look, like, if you want to get somebody right now, it's really going to cost you. These teams with extra goaltenders or goaltenders to trade, they know that they are in the position of leverage. Sometimes you have the hammer and sometimes you don't. Like, I think one of the things that Toronto tried to do is they tried to offer a late round pick for a goalie and they just didn't get much out there. Now, I'm looking at this board and please keep this board up for a second. Let's go left to right. Gibson. Most teams are going to have to retain, so you have to pay the price to get the player, and then you have to pay the price to retain. Uh, Pad Verbeek is a really tough negotiator, a really tough negotiator, and I've been told that's going to be a really hard deal to do. Markstrom has a no-move clause, so number one, he has to agree to anything. So that's the biggest challenge there. 
Merzlikens, I definitely think he's available. I think, again, the question is 5.4 million cap hit. He struggled at times. What is Columbus willing to do to make this work? But he's definitely available. Allen is definitely available one more year. Montreal's asked a bigger price. They're one of the teams that they're knowing that they're in the position of strength. Right now, no one's willing to pay what Montreal's willing to do. Cockenden on the right, he's an interesting one. He's available. He's up after this year. He's an unrestricted free agent. His underlying numbers have been really good on a San Jose team that struggled. I definitely think there's interest in him. Number one, I think the price, like the other goaltenders, is high. Number two, I think the only question on Kakinen is he's never really been in a position before where he's had to lead a team that's had expectations. And I think that's one of the things that some teams is weighing here is if we do go out and get Kakinen who's having a great year, how do they think he's going to handle being a face of a team that wants to contend or wants to win playoff rounds? Okay, so like I said, we're going to talk about Jacob Markstrom and also Elvis Merz-Lincolns. Now, I've, I've discussed it on the show before about how I feel about the goaltending situation for Devils. And anytime I bring up the defense or the goaltending when I'm doing my post-game recap, it seems like the people in the comment section, they seem to be divided. Like, I see a lot of people putting the blame on the defense. I see a lot of people putting the blame on the goaltending. And I say, I don't think it's pick or choose. I think it's definitely an eye for an eye type of thing because the defense has been iffy this season. And let's face it, with Dougie Hamilton and Jonas Siegenthal are now out for an extended period of time, that does hurt their overall depth regardless of what you might think of them. So the defense hasn't been all that best because, hell, Brendan Smith was playing top-line defensive minutes the, in the previous game against the Tampa Bay Lightning. And if that's uh, an indicator for what's to come, I'm a little concerned about that. But the goaltending hasn't been all that great either because from a statistical standpoint, Vitek Vanacek in the amount of games that he's appeared in and the amount of reps that he's been given, he is the worst goalie in the NHL. So he is already, I guess, gone lower than Samsonov. And Samsonov recently just got brought back up by the Toronto Maple Leafs. So we'll see what happens. But I think the experiment with Vitek Vanacek, unfortunately, I think it's run its course. Because let's go back to last season. When did Vitek Vanacek start having his struggles? It was around mid-February. And or if you want to be a little more conservative about it, we'll say March. So we're approaching almost a year in which uh, Vitek Vanacek has been inconsistent for the Devils because we know what happened in the playoffs. He was not the reason why the Devils made it past the first round against New York Rangers. It was Akira Schmidt who took his starting spot. So the Devils decided to give him another chance at the beginning of the year. I thought that was the right move, but unfortunately, it's been more or less the same. He's very inconsistent. He can never get into a groove. When he makes one mistake, it snowballs. So when I saw the comments in the previous episode, I saw some people coming to VTech Vanacek's defense saying like, well, look at that goal that uh, that happened in the first period. It was the shorthanded goal in which Glenn Denning got his second one of the game. And that was the one in which Luke Hughes did lose an edge and he fell onto the ground and Glenn Denning swooped in and, and stole the puck and scored it on VTech. That is true. Like the defense in front of VTech sometimes hasn't been all that good. But going back to a statistic standpoint, that was a goal in which Vitek Vanacek could have saved. The analytics show it. And analytically, once again, he is the worst goalie in the NHL. So regardless of what you think of him from a personal standpoint, from an optic standpoint, the numbers are showing that Vanacek is like in the bottom of the NHL in terms of the games that he's appeared in, the reps he's been given. So the experiment with Vitek Vanacek, it just has not worked because that was one of the main issues when the Capitals traded him away because uh, Vanacek was solid during the regular season, but come the playoffs, it was crash and burn. And the Devils got a lick of that because he was the first goalie since Martin Brodeur to reach 30 wins in a single season. But then come February, come March, he started to become a little bit more inconsistent. It didn't, it didn't get to the point where you were concerned, but you realized it. And then come the playoffs, it was all downhill from there. And this season, more or less the same. 
So if you look back at some of those games, how many of those outings do you think uh, came down to goaltending? Like in which the Devils were right there and maybe they could have been in a better position if they would have made those saves in the first place. So that's my thing. It's never 100% the goalie. I'm not trying to say this whole season is on VTech Vancek's shoulders, but he does play a part in it. Same with Akira Schmidt and I guess Nico Dawes to an extent. So the goaltending for the Devils has not been good. And I think the experiment with VTech Vancek, I think it's run its course. So if Vancek wants to stay on the roster, that's fine, but he has to be a backup. He cannot be the goalie that carries the Devils into the promised land. That's not going to happen in the first place. And I think everyone can agree with that. Let me ask you this. If you really want to see the Devils succeed, especially with the core that they have in Jack Hughes, Jesper Bratt, Nico Heischer, Timo Meyer, Dougie Hamilton, and so on, do you think Vitek Vancek is that guy for the Devils? Just asking. Because I was willing to give him another chance. And unfortunately, it didn't work out. So wh whoever's saying, like, this is not on VTech Vancek, I beg to differ. He does play a factor in this, and he has not been good. So you can think what you want to think from an optic standpoint. But from an analytical and a statistical standpoint, he just ain't it. He, he just wasn't up to par. So that's my two-cent opinion on it. I'll leave the the decision up to you but in my personal opinion i don't think vtech vancheck should be the goalie for devils moving forward i think that experiment has run its course and it come the playoff time god willing it might more or less be the same so that's where i stand with vtech vancheck and i think a change does need to happen for new jersey now we'll talk about jacob markstrom and also elvis merce lincoln's momentarily but before we continue I want to tell you guys about FanDuel. So the NFL regular season is wrapping up, but there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get 150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's 150 bucks in bonus bets, win or lose. The app is super easy to use with so many different ways to bet, like live same game parlays, find bets in the new explore tab, make a parlay in the parlay hub, the best way to find popular parlays and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. Okay, let's talk about Jacob Markstrom and the possibility of the Devils trading for him. Now, I was talking about this with Jersey Joe in a recent episode in which we looked at uh, Nick Villano's trade proposals on pucks and pitchforks for Markstrom and possibly Noah Hannafin. So I think that might have to come in a package for Devils. But I think Jacob Markstrom is actually a very good goalie because this season he has a record of 12, 11, and 2. He has a save percentage of 9, 10, a goals against average of 2.65, and he has one shutout this season. Some quick tidbits he led the league in losses during the 2021 56 uh, game COVID shortened year with 19, but worth mentioning that the Flames were one of the uh, bottom tier teams. But the very next year, he led the league in uh, shutouts with nine. And that same season, he finished second in the Vesna Trophy uh, right behind Igor Shesterkin. So I think Markstrom would be a breath of fresh air for the Devils. Now, here's his deal it is six years. $36 million, and he uh, will be paid annually $6 million until he's an unrestricted free agent after the 2025-2026 season. Now, his situation is a little unique. Now, similar to what Elliot Freeman said in the clip that I played in segment one, he would have to go to New Jersey, but considering the fact that I think uh, Nikita Zadorov and Chris Tanev, they would be willing to be traded to, to New Jersey in a hypothetical scenario. Well, Zadorov is now with the Canucks, but before he was traded, there were reports saying that he would be willing to go to New Jersey. So I don't think that's going to be an issue because the Devils are just like one goalie away from really going over the hump. But like I said, I was talking about this with Jersey Joe in a recent episode. And when we were looking at some of the trade packages, uh, here's one that could be the, the most likely scenario, according to Nick Volano. So Volano said, 
Devils receive Jacob Markstrom. The Flames will receive a second round draft pick and Zakhar Berdikov. Now, uh, Volano also added by saying Markstrom is going to be the hardest for the Flames to trade. So he will most likely come with the easiest price. The Devils need a goalie, but nobody who wants a goalie is willing to go two more years after this one at $6 million per. The Maple Leafs just got Nylander's $11 million contract, and they can't afford another risk in the net after this season. The Hurricanes can't afford them on their roster. Neither can the Oilers. So it could be a unique scenario for the Devils to try to swoop him up. So I like that uh, trade proposal uh, that Volano pitched. Now I'm just going to tell you guys what I discussed with Jersey Joe a few days ago, which is I think for the Devils, I'm okay and, and willing to give up that second round pick just because I think the Devils don't really need it at this point. They're not trying to rebuild. They're not going to like if this season is a complete disaster, I don't think the Devils are going to be looking at the draft to help them out this time around because I think they have their eyes set on getting back to the playoffs, especially with the core pieces that they have. So I, I'm okay with parting ways with that second round pick, similar to what Nick Volano put in his article. And I'll actually put a link in the description so you can read more of uh, Nick's thoughts for yourself. Now, here's another trade package that consists of the Devils getting Noah Hannafin. And it will consist of the Devils trading away Lenny Haminaho to the Flames, Akira Schmidt to the Flames, Nathan Bastian to the Flames, 2024 third and 2025 second round pick. And they would have to get a third team involved. So uh, the $2 million would be retained on Markstrom from the Ducks and a third round pick would go to the Ducks via Calgary. So um, I don't know if the Ducks would actually get involved, but let's just say they hypothetically do. I think that's an interesting trade, but I don't know how I feel about parting ways with Lenny Haminaho. So this is where the issue of the trade will take place, which is Markstrom is a very good goalie in my opinion. I literally told you guys some of his track history, which includes him finishing second in the Vesna a few years ago behind Igor Shosturkin, leading the league in shutouts with nine. So we're at a point which is like, what do the Devils give up if they really do want Markstrom? So I gave you guys that first trade proposal courtesy of Nick Volano, but what if the Flames want a little bit more? How deep in their pockets are the Devils willing to go? So my thing is like, when we look at some roster players, who would you give up? Like. I guess some options on the table would be Alexander Holtz, Nathan Bastian. Uh, I guess reports were saying that Michael McLeod and trade discussions involving him have, have picked up uh, by other teams, like other teams are calling the Devils. Devils are not shopping Michael McLeod, just to uh, make that perfectly clear. Maybe Dawson Mercer, I don't really know. But all those players I just listed, are you willing to give up any of those players? Because I sure as hell don't. So I think when it comes down to it, I think you would have to sacrifice Alexander Holtz because I don't think he's going to be given the uh, big enough playing time that he deserves because Lindy Ruff has a vendetta on him for some whatever reason. I think Holtz definitely deserves a bigger role, and I think he definitely uh, has been showcasing his skill set, especially five on five, but still not enough. Now, you're probably wondering if Alexander Holtz is traded in any trade circumstance, do you ex do I expect for him to thrive? The answer to that is absolutely yes. Similar to what Yegor Sharangovich is doing with the Flames because Yegor Sharangovich is playing top line minutes. He's on the top power play. He's on the top PK for the Flames and he recently got a hat trick. He's not he would not have gotten that opportunity with the Devils because once the Devils got Timo Meyer, Sharangovich was the odd man out. So I would expect for Holtz, if he is traded away, to thrive in any new circumstance that he sees himself in. But my thing is, like, I think my only issue with Markstrom is that I don't know what the asking price will be for him. But we'll see what happens because, like Volano said, uh, the Oilers wouldn't be able to afford him. The Hurricanes won't be able to afford him. But the question I have, which is despite the salary cap projected to go up, Remember, Toffoli needs a new contract. Dawson Mercer needs a new contract. You, you're still in entry-level deals with uh, Shimon Nemetz and Luke Hughes. They're going to expire uh, before you know it. So you got to keep an eye out for that. So, And 
also like uh, Vitek Vanacek, if, if he actually does stick around on the roster, uh, you got to worry about his contract a little bit. And I don't think teams are willing to trade for Vitek Vanacek because his stock is not really high for a time being. So just putting that out there. So final verdict. I would love Markstrom on the roster if the asking price is right. And it just comes down to what would the Devils have to give up and how does that affect their future? Because it would be a commitment to get Jacob Markstrom. Now, we're going to talk about Elvis Merzlinkins momentarily because there's an interesting development happening in Columbus. But before we continue, I want to tell you guys about Jace Medical. So I know we come here to sports to escape from some of the crazy realities in real life. But can we just talk a minute about preparing for the real world? Because I can't imagine a more helpless feeling than if my family or uh, somebody uh, got sick while a supply chain issue kept them from life-saving medication they needed. Thankfully, we'll be okay with Jace Medical. So the Jace case is a pack of five different antibiotics to treat a long list of bacterial illnesses, and this stuff could happen to any of us. So visit jacemedical.com and complete your physician encounter. It will be reviewed by a board-certified physician and your medications will be dispensed by a licensed pharmacy at a fraction of the regular cost. It's never been more important to be prepared than today. So go to jacemedical.com and use the offer code Locked On to get $20 off your order. All right, let's talk about Elvis Merzlinkis, shall we? So uh, thank you. Oh, uh, thank you very much. I, I couldn't help myself. So according to our buddy, Brian Hedger of the Columbus Dispatch, he put out on X and said that Merz Lincoln says that he won't tolerate being relegated to a third goalie. Didn't get to a point where he requested a trade, but said it's a mutual agreement with the team that a new scenario is necessary. Said he'll keep his home here, loves Columbus, but needs a new scenario. So that's a little interesting because I've been talking about Elvis a couple times when I'm doing trade discussions. and. Uh, he originally signed a five-year, $27 million deal. He'll be paid annually $5.4 million until after the 2026-2027 season. So similar to Markstrom, it would be a little bit of a commitment. But the thing is, is that Merz Lincolns is a little younger compared to Markstrom. So when we look at like the overall future for the Devils, Markstrom might not be a part of the Jack Hughes era for long. But I think Merz Lincolns, given the fact that he's like, what, 27, he could be around for a, a, a good amount of time when Jack Hughes uh, is in his prime. But uh, digressing a little bit, the thing about Merz Lincolns, and I talked about this with Jersey Joe, is that Elvis is not really the best goalie available, but he might be somewhat solid. And I think it could be a decent risk. So this season, he has a record of 7, 8, and 6. He has a save percentage of 907 and a goals against average of 3.25. But keep in mind, he's playing with the Columbus Blue Jackets, so his goals saved above average is 2.7. And the Blue Jackets are in last place in the Metro. So we'll see. I, I, I get that might not be the top priority, that a lot of people have in mind, but I think Elvis would be still somewhat solid because here's what it comes down to. And this is exactly what I talked about in the first segment, which is the experiment with VTEC has not worked. So you really need to get like a breath of fresh air in the locker room for the devils, like a new starting goalie just to shake things up a little bit. And I think Elvis is capable of doing so. But the thing is, he doesn't really have any hardware. The the one thing that he can say that he has is, a, is an NHL all-rookie team, but that's pretty much it. So he's not going to razzle-dazzle you a little bit, but I still think he's a solid goalie, and I think uh, that would definitely be a decent experiment for the Devils. And the one thing I'll say about this trade scenario is that if we're being realistic, I think this is the most doable for Tom Fitzgerald because – I remember doing uh, a few silly season discussions during the summer of 2022, and I listed some possible uh, options that the Devils could turn to. So I looked at someone like Darcy Kemper. I looked at a few others, and I also listed VTech Vancheck. And I said, when comparing all the goalies I just talked about, I said VTech Vancheck 
was going to be the more realistic option. And lo and behold, come the second day of draft night, it was revealed that the that the Washington Capitals traded away VTech to New Jersey. So I think this is going to be the same scenario if if I have that same power that I had during the summer of 2022. Uh, I'll I'll make a prediction. I'll say that I think Elvis Merce Lincolns might be a, the more realistic option for the Devils. I'm not saying it's the best option, but it might be the most realistic because I don't think he's going to be all that expensive. Columbus doesn't really value him all that much because they were going to relegate him to a third string goalie. And the thing is, is that Columbus has sort of helped out the Devils before because remember, they did that sign and trade for Damon Severson. Now, albeit the Devils were going to let Damon Severson walk anyhow. So I don't know how much that really helped, but the fact that the Columbus Blue Jackets were willing to do it, they gave the Devils a draft pick and the Devils later used that draft pick to get Tyler Toffoli in the Yegor Sharon Govich trade. So um, that was that was somewhat interesting uh, chain of events. But anyway, I think when looking at uh, Elvis Merz Lincolns, he's solid. He's not spectacular, but he's solid. So would he be that goalie that can help uh, lead the Devils out of the gutter? I really don't know. I don't want to jump the gun on anything, but I think that's what uh, it's come down to, which is what can Tom Fitzgerald afford without uh, making a rip in the Devils' development? Because you don't want to like include Seamus Casey. You don't want to include... Uh, some of your other top prospects in the deal. You don't want to like include Shimon the Mets. You don't want to include uh, Dawson Mercer, Michael McLeod, Nathan Bash. You don't want to include like those types of players in trade packages. And my concern is like if the Devils are looking for a goalie and knowing that the Devils are kind of in a vulnerable position because they're on the outside looking in when it comes to a playoff spot, they have a lot of decent assets. So I, I have a bad feeling that general managers are going to be like hawks on the devils, which is they're going to be like, okay, cough up Michael McLeod if you really want a goalie. Because I think that's where the reports started to swirl saying that teams were interested in Michael McLeod because it's just like Fitzgerald is probably on the phone lines searching for a suitor for a goalie and teams might be asking for like Michael McLeod or whomever. So I think for Elvis, I don't think it would. I don't think Columbus would say like they want Michael McLeod. I think they will uh, be happy to trade Elvis for maybe a solid prospect and maybe go from there. But I could be wrong. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section if you're watching on YouTube. What are some options that the Devils could pursue? Do you want Elvis? Do you want Markstrom on the roster? If so, what are you willing to give up? Here's your guys' thoughts. So if you're listening on podcast streaming service, hit me up on my personal X page app at TreyMat4 or the show's X page app at Locked On Devils. As for this episode, that's all the time I have for you. So continue to stay safe. Have a wonderful day in New Jersey. Go Devils. I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Thanks for listening once again.